Victory Baptist Church this morning. Let's all grab a songbook, stand and turn to page 29. Page number 29. What a joy it is to be in the Lord's house, amen. And we thank the Lord for the good day already that he's given us and for the privilege to be here this morning. We thank him for that. And it's certainly good to see all of you here in the service today. We would like to welcome those who are listening by way of radio and watching by way of Facebook. Thank you for tuning our way this morning, amen. And we're trusting that God will meet with us all as we gather to worship the Lord and give him glory and honor and to seek his will for our lives. And so as we pray today, let's pray the Lord's will be done. Amen. And let's pray today for those that are traveling. We've got a lot of folks that are out traveling. Let's remember them. Then we got a lot of folks that are sick. And so let's remember them this morning uh, that God would touch their lives. Let's remember those that are lost today. And also pray for our school here at Victory. Uh, just a few weeks, we'll be starting our school year up. And I trust that you'll pray for us. God will help us pray for our staff and their families and also all of our students. Also our troops and their families and our missionaries and their families as well this morning. Also continue to pray for Kenley Edwards, uh, James and Beulah Edwards, uh, Melvin Franklin, Sandra Pendergrass, Donna Newton, Patsy McDonald, Frank Jernigan, Darlene Hanford, uh, Snookum and Martha Abbott, remember them in prayer. Uh, Nate Bobbitt, George Grissom, Tony and Brandy Bobbitt, Reggie Wynn. Also remember Brother Mike Adcock, he's going to be having some outpatient surgery in the morning, so pray for him. Also Tony Fisher, Edward Poole. Also remember Brother Junior Stevenson in prayer. He goes to the doctor this week to find out the results of uh, the biopsy that they took there. And so let's remember him this, this morning. Also, continue to pray for Donald Talbot, Sue Setliff, Sharon Kay, Melissa Woodard, Tammy Martin, 
Lee Thomerson, Mary Lou Duncan, Connie Hendricks, Darlene Wester, uh, Valerie Hendrick, Martha Stangback, Joe Owen, Stephanie Stafford, Evan and Janice Mitchell, Tony Hill, uh, David Painter, Janice Hart Watson, Danny Dickerson, Mike Askew. Also remember the uh, family of Blake Dickerson, the young uh, your man that uh, lost his life uh, tragically. So let's remember that family, continue to pray for them. Also remember uh, the Atkinson family, Brother Marion Atkinson. Uh, passed away, went to be with the Lord, and uh, that's Ricky Atkinson's dad. So remember remember that family in prayer. I know that uh, he was preaching in North Carolina in a, in a meeting Thursday, and while he was preaching, he fainted, passed out, and ended up having a major heart attack. And uh, when they got him to the hospital, the doctors told him that he definitely had to have open heart surgery and he might not make it through, but he wasn't going to make it if he didn't have it. So... He said, Brother Marion was at peace with it. He said, I, I don't want to leave my family here. But he said, if I do, he said, I've got family waiting on me over there. Amen. Amen. And uh, Brother Ricky said he said it with a smile on his face. And uh, the Lord took him on home. So remember the family there. Amen. That God will comfort their hearts. Also continue to pray uh, for Marvin Robertson, John Matthews, Pat Matthews, and Sarah Gupton. Pray for the choir this morning as they sing. And uh, the special singing that God would use them and for the preaching of the word. Amen. The Lord's will be done here this morning. So let's bow for prayer and just ask God to have his way. Good to see Brother Sister Combs back this morning. Continue to pray for Brother Combs. And we're thankful to see them here this morning. I'm going to ask Brother Ray Branch if he will to come pray for us this morning. And as he leads us the Lord in prayer, let's all pray together. Sure good to be in God's house this morning. I was glad when it came Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I was excited about coming to church this morning and glad to see you here today. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for this day that you that you've made. Yes. Ask you to bless the preaching of your word. Ask you to bless and, and strengthen the brethren and bless every request that has been made known unto thee. Thank you for the blood of Christ that cleanses from all sin and the peace that you that you give and all within. For it's in Jesus' name. Bless the singing, bless the preaching of your word. For it's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
I probably wouldn't even be alive, I'd be in hell. When I look back all my life already, how good God's been to me. Amen. I know we joke carry on a lot, but Thursday, my wife and I, we celebrated 45 years of being married. I'm thankful for what God's did in our life. I'm thankful for all that God's done in our family. Lord willing, if I live until tomorrow, I'll be 65. Been married 45 and be 65, so I didn't learn much in my few short years prior to getting married, but I sure have been educated since. I just want to brag on the goodness of God, the grace and mercy of God. If it had to be for Him, don't tell the word we might be. I want to try to sing that last verse again, and then I want you to stand with us and help us sing the chorus because certainly all of us have got a lot to be thankful for today. As we look back over our days at God's given us, how He's brought us through, how He's taken care of us, how He's met every need, we've got a lot to be thankful for. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we might survey my blessings. The strength of all my days. Say how excellent is your name in all the earth. We should give him all our praise. Oh, we should give him all of our praise. Because how excellent is his name in all the earth. Let's sing that chorus together this morning. Hallelujah. He's worthy. What a joy, amen, it is to know the Lord. Well, while the ushers are coming this morning as we receive the offering, as we worship through our giving, make mention of a few things today. Of course, we have postponed the um, Car Camp Car Lake, and we'll be doing that, Lord willing, on August the 21st. And so they were calling for storms this evening, and a lot of rain, so we figured we better... Uh, not try to have that today, but Lord willing, we're going to try to do it on the 21st of August, so we'll have church tonight, where we wasn't going to have church here, but we will have services tonight here at the church at regular time at 6, amen? Also, don't forget August the 6th, there'll be a baby shower uh, for Stephanie and Chris Easter, and that'll be in the fellowship hall from 2 to 4 in the afternoon, and it is a boy, so uh, therefore you know what kind of uh, materials you need to buy, amen, and uh, you pray for uh, Stephanie and the baby that everything continues to go well, and that soon uh, uh, when it's time for her to deliver, everything will go well, amen, and uh, so we appreciate Stephanie and Chris. 
Also, August the 29th through the 31st uh, is our scheduled revival meeting. And uh, Brother David McNeil uh, from Roanoke, Virginia will be with us. And also the Joy Heirs. We have some revival uh, posters out on the table in the vestibule. Be sure to pick some up, get the word out, and pray, amen, for revival. Pray for Brother David. He is, uh, last couple of days, he's having problems with his blood pressure. They've had him at the hospital three different times because his blood pressure was so high. So pray for him, amen, uh, that God will touch him. Also, this card here I want to read says, Thank you. It says, Victory Baptist Church, you make such a difference, and it is so deeply appreciated. It says, Thank you so much for your sacrificial giving to help us get to Arise. We love all of you so much. Love and thanks, the Arise team. And so we appreciate the card and appreciate what uh, you have done to help our young people. Amen. So let's bow for prayer and ask the Lord to have his will, his way, in the remainder of the service this morning, Brother Tim, how about praying for us? Let us all pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, for the wonderful day you've given us here, Lord, to worship you today, Lord, in spirit and truth. Lord, we do uh, lift up all the requests that have been made this morning, Lord, and Many, Lord, that just have various health needs, Lord, we just pray you meet each and every yeah. one, Father, and yeah. touch them, Lord. Uh, we pray for all of those who might be traveling, Lord, or those out sick, Lord, that you keep them safe, Lord, and, and bless them, Lord. And, Lord, we do lift up the service here to you today, yeah. Lord, and the preaching of thy word, Lord, and everything that's done would just bring honor and glory to the name of Jesus, Lord. Yeah. And, Lord, we pray for our... Uh, uh, troops, Lord, and just continue to bless them, Lord, and uh, just touch them, Lord, and keep them safe, Lord, as they protect us, Lord, and we pray for all of our law enforcement as well, Lord, and uh, and all of our first responders, Lord, and, and our missionaries, Lord, we lift them up to you as well, them and their families, Lord, and just pray you keep them safe and help them, Lord, as they spread your word around the world, Lord. And, yeah. Lord, uh, we just ask now that you bless and those, Lord, that might be here that are lost, Lord, or might be listening today, Lord, on on the radio, Lord, or, or watching on Facebook, Lord, that you just touch that heart, Lord, and just help them to see, Lord, that that hole in their life, Lord, will never be filled, Lord, without the Lord Jesus, Lord, and that they would come to Christ before it's eternally too late, Lord. And, Lord, we just ask now that you bless the remainder of the service, Lord, bless this offering, Bless the gift and the giver, Father, and we do ask it all in Jesus' precious name for his sake. Amen. Amen.
talking about an individual. And this parable came about because of a question uh, that a man asked the Lord or a problem that he had. And he said, Lord, I want you to tell my brother to divide his inheritance with me. And of course, Jesus said, man, who am I? I'm not, a, I'm not here to be a divider or a judge over you. And then he began to talk to him about this parable of this certain rich man. As we think about what Jesus is saying in these verses, I believe that we can look at this man in the parable and we, there are many commendable things that you can say about this man mentioned. The truth is that ordinarily sign is a wealth of, uh, a wealth is a sign of hard work and a lack of laziness. Amen. Of course, I, I don't know where people are today. I've never seen so many people in need of employees. I mean, everybody I have spoken with, every business, everything that we see, they're short of help everywhere. My question is, how are people living without working? Amen. If they've got a secret, I need to know it. But anyway, but most of the time when you see somebody that has is prosperous and doing well, it's because of hard work and because of a lack of laziness. The farmer who has who grows or has a better crop than other farmers usually works harder, keeps his fences better, plows the field earlier, and more time and effort than the others that do not make a success of it. We sometimes forget that here is a man who worked hard, uh, who saved things carefully. And we can say to his credit that he was very careful to preserve what his field produced. He built barns to preserve the fruits of his field. Now we would suppose that this man attained what the covetous man would have hoped to attain in verse 15. But what a mistake this man made. He supposed that he would have many years to enjoy all the things that he had earned. But the Bible warns us in the book of James chapter number 4 and verse number 13, the Bible says, Go to now, ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year, and buy, and sell, and get gain. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth away. For that you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live, and do this or that. And so I suppose to his credit that he felt now that he could retire after a, a life of labor. He had much goods, but all that he was thinking about was food for his belly, clothes for his back, and a house for his body without thinking of the eternal welfare of his soul. So many people today are so caught up with the things that are only temporary that they are, not, they are neglecting that which is most important, and that is the eternal. I mean, listen, when he spoke, he spoke to his soul. He said, my soul, take thine ease. He knew that he was going to live, and he thought he had many years. He thought he had it all planned out. But, oh, dear friend, how things change so quickly with life. Oh, listen. And so when God spoke to him, God said to him, thou fool. Oh, God said he was a fool. A fool simply in that he never considered eternity. And he died unprepared uh, for eternity. He was a fool to have spent so much time and thought and labor in laying by money and property for the future. Oh, how much better he would have been on that day 
to have prepared his goods for his soul and for eternity and for the goods in heaven that he could have laid up. But no, my friend, he was more concerned about this life instead of the life to come. The Bible said in Luke 12, 21, Jesus said, so is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Here's a man, everybody would say, he's rich, he's wealthy. But yet God looks at him and says, you're poor. You have nothing. You're losing it all. Everything is gone and your soul is at stake. Amen. This man was prosperous, but yet he was pitiful. He lived a life that was rich, but in the end, it ended in regret. Oh, you say, preacher, why? The Bible said in Mark chapter 8, Jesus said, for what shall it profit a man? If he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? I'll guarantee you on this night, when God said, thou fool, this night thy soul is required of thee. Oh, it was then and there he realized it was too late. He had neglected the most important aspect of his life, and that was his soul, amen. And he would have given anything. He would have given all of his barns and multiplied barns for one more opportunity to get things right with God. Oh, this, this morning, we need to think more, not as much about the temporal things. Hey, I don't see, there's nothing wrong. You're supposed to work. You're supposed to provide for your family. And we depend on the Lord to supply our needs. But friend, there's more important issues at stake. That's your soul and your life that you live for God. Notice this man. His happiness was limited to the happenings on earth. Well, I'm glad this world's not my home. Amen. I'm thankful for the blessings God's given in my life. I'm thankful for the material things God's given me. But I've got news for you. I'm going to leave them one of these days. And everything you have, you are going to leave them one of these days. Our happiness cannot just be dependent upon what we have here on earth. Amen. Here, this man, everything seemed to be going so well. He had it made. Brother Mark, he had everything. I mean, everything that he touched. Have you ever seen people that seem like everything they touch turns to gold? Here's a man you can look at and say, everything he does, it just seems like it just multiplies. I mean, he's got everything but he's missing the most important thing. Everything seemed to be going so well. He enjoyed a plentiful portion, but a drought would have devastated him. Too much rain would have ruined him, but yet here he is with all of this success. Success in farming had made him happy. And too often, our happiness and our peace is based on our surrounding and the happenings of earth. But I got news for you. That could all change in a heartbeat. Amen. It can all change in a heartbeat. Only faith in Christ equips us for the tough times ahead. I'm glad that Paul said it like this. In Romans chapter 8 verse 38 and 39. And he said, I'm persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Here's a man, his happiness was limited to the happenings of earth. Secondly, his holdings were limited to the harvest of earth. His prosperity produced problems. He didn't know what to do. Things were going so good. Too many are ruined by success. But he suffered from eye trouble. He, <laughs> that was his biggest problem. His whole life was about him. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull down these barns. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. It's all about I. He had eye trouble. 
his new barns would advertise his success and his affluence to his neighbors. Oh, it was all about him and what he has done. He forgot that everything that he had along with his harvest was perishable. Trusting Christ as your Savior will keep things from perishing. Amen. Hallelujah. Here's a man that seemingly had it all. He's saying to himself, man, look what I've got. Everything's so good. Everything's been so wonderful. Look how blessed I am and all the hard work that I have done, what it has brought me. But God said, you're a fool. His hopes were limited to the horizons of earth. He prepared for his retirement, but not for the day of reckoning. Listen, there's a lot of folks that they're working to prepare to retire, and they've not even thought about they might not make it to retirement. Amen? A lot of people are preparing for the days to come, but you don't know that that day's coming. But I'll tell you a day that is coming. There's going to come a day you'll face God, and you'll meet God prepared or unprepared. There's going to come a day of reckoning for you and for me. He's prepared for retirement, but not for the day of reckoning. He looked to the future with confidence, and he said, Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. All oh, soul, you've got it made now. His plan for the future was faulty. Amen. He planned on ease. He planned on eating. <laughs> I mean, he thought, man, we're going to have a great time. I'm just going to sit back and enjoy it and get fat. Amen. He thought about all of that, but death ended it all. Death ended it all. And may I say that his eternal home was determined by his half-heartedness while here on earth. This man planned for everything, but he neglected to plan for eternity. Every one of us in this building this morning, we're going to live forever. Saved or lost, you're going to live forever. The, the question is, where are you going to live? And where you live is what you're going to determine what you do with Christ. Amen. Here's a man that his eternal home, he neglected to plan for eternity. His eternal destiny was determined when he died. Why? Because he had not made preparation. He had not prepared for eternity, although he prepared to live but he hadn't prepared to die. Ecclesiastes 11.3, If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if the tree fall toward the south or toward the north, in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. Beloved, if you die without Christ, that'll be it. Nothing can be changed in that situation. Thank God for your saved. <laughs> I'm glad nothing can be changed in that situation. Amen. Matter of fact, here we find a man that worked hard. He left all that he had worked for, all that he had saved, and he left it all behind. Others would now own all he had worked so hard to gain. He lost everything. He lost it all. And this morning, as far as the Word of God is concerned, this man is now screaming in a place called hell. He's not screaming, oh, my barn. He's not screaming, oh, my crops. All the things that he had. Oh, he's screaming for the mercy of God, and there'll be no mercy given. Oh, listen, friend, we know in Luke chapter 16, Jesus told about a man that died, and he was a rich man as well. And he died, and the Bible said, Jesus said into hell, he lift up his eyes being in torments. And many today are like this foolish man. They invest their lives in the temporal, in the trinkets of the, the fancies of this world and neglect the most important aspect of life, and that is their soul. Oh, my real riches are laid up in heaven. Amen. Matter of fact, this man, Jesus said, when he ended up talking about this man, he said, so is he that layeth up treasure for himself 
and is not rich toward God. I'm glad you can be rich. If you're poor, you can still be rich, amen, if you know Christ as your Savior. The Bible tells us in Luke 12, 21, so is he that layeth up treasure for himself. You can lay all you want up for yourself, but if you don't know God, you're poor. Amen? You're poor. Jesus said it like this, Matthew chapter 6, verse 19, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. That's the reason so many folks are in love with the world. This is where their treasure's at. If you got more on the other side, you would think more of heavenly things. Amen? And he said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field which it today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto is the evil thereof. Hey, Jesus said that. That's not something the Baptist denomination has come up with. That's the words of Christ, amen. I guarantee if you'll follow those words, it will help you in your life. 2 Peter 3, 9 said, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. This man thought he had it made. I've got it all together now. Now, soul, Soul, let me tell you, soul, you can just take it easy. You can take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God changed his whole plans. Isn't it amazing how God can disrupt our plans? And it doesn't take very much. I tell you, in recent days, we have seen that. Man, my heart broke when I heard about that teenage boy losing his life in an automobile accident the other night. No doubt, probably nobody that day thought anything about that. I know his mom. I know his uncle. I, I mean, both of them graduated from our school several years ago. and I mean, I, I can only imagine the heartbreak that it brought. When the news was broke to them, all of a sudden, everything changed. Friend, it don't take much. All it takes is a phone call. All it takes is a trip to the doctor. When you think oh, everything's wonderful and the doctor tells you different. This is what happened to this man. He thought he had it made. He thought everything's going to be great now. But God said, thou fool, this night is your soul required of thee. This morning, none of us has a promise of, matter of fact, we don't even have a promise of the rest of the day. 
and we certainly don't have a promise of tomorrow. But I'm going to ask you this morning, if God said, today's the day you're going to be held accountable, you're going to eternity, would it be well with you? Are you depending on the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you saved by the grace of God? If you are, if that day takes place, it'll be sad for everyone left behind, but it'll be joyful for you. But that day, that night, when God said to this man, Thou fool, this night, that was a bad night for him. He lost it all. He lost it all. And he died and went to a devil's hell. The Bible tells us, Second Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 2, For he said, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, today is the day of salvation. That man thought he had plenty of time. Some of you might be sitting here, some of those listening to my radio, some watching by Facebook, some of them be watching later by YouTube. You think you got plenty of time, but none of us are promised another day. That's the reason God said today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to get in. Don't be like this man and think you got plenty of time. He thought he had plenty of time. He was going to live and enjoy life, but God changed his plans. I wonder, what are you willing to hold so tight to? That's worth going to hell over. I don't know of anything. I would turn loose of everything to give my heart to Christ because that's all that's going to matter in the end. Oh, he was a rich man, but he was poor. Oh, my. You can be a rich man and be rich and know the things of Christ, and God can use your life. But you can also be a poor man and be rich if you know Jesus as your Savior. Jesus said, your heavenly Father knows what you have need of. If you'll serve God, put God first, he'll meet every need in your life. Amen. Thank God this morning, I'm glad the poor can be made rich in Jesus Christ. Do you know him today, Father? I thank you, Lord, for the word of God. Father, I pray that this story that has been told to us concerning this rich man, that, Lord, he neglected the most important aspect of life, and that was his soul. God, if there's somebody in this building today that has been disregarding that most important aspect of their life is making sure that they're saved by the grace of God. Oh, Father, may you speak to their heart today. May they make things sure this morning in the Lord Jesus Christ. And God, may we that are saved, may we serve you. May we put you first and seek after your will. And God, you have promised that you'd take care of all of our need. I'm glad this morning, though you may be poor, you can be rich. In Jesus Christ. Oh, to have the forgiveness of sin. To have your name written in heaven. To have the assurance of salvation. Oh, God, may you speak to every heart in this building. And those who have been listening and watching, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. What number? 354, as we stand to sing this morning. God spoke to your heart. You just be mindful of the Spirit and surrender to Him. Don't wait till it's too late. And God said you had an opportunity. God help you. Come on this morning.
could not be here to his sickness, God could touch him. We pray, Lord, for those who are out traveling, God give them a safety home. Or those who have grown cold and indifferent, we pray for revival. Oh, God, stir in their hearts. Help them, Lord, to realize to be faithful unto thee. God, we need your touch in our life. Help us, Lord, to love you. Trust you. Be faithful, Lord. God, to your will. Thank you again for everyone here today. May you bless as we depart. I pray for us that we're having to do. Lord, bring us back this evening. God, we'll give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I certainly appreciate you being here today. And don't forget the service tonight. If we're not doing the camp parlay today.